Shabbat Shalom. As many of you know, we just returned from Eretz Israel, from the land of Israel, and it was amazing to be there and to see so many beautiful fruits ripening at this time, coming into fruition, and that is very much connected to the promise that we find in this week's Torah portion, Parshat Akeb, where Moses is addressing the Israelites on the steps of Moab and letting them know they are going to be entering into this land of Israel without him, but giving them some idea of what they can expect when they get there. So Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 7 and 8, Moses addresses the Israelites saying, Ki Adonai Elohecha Mibiacha El Eretz Tova, Eretz Nachalei Mayim, Ayonotu Tehomot, Yotzi Mibikat Bahar. God is going to bring you into a good land, a land issuing streams and springs and fountains from the plains and hills. And then it says, Eretz Chita Useora, Vegefen Uteina Verimon, Eretz Zeit Shemen Udvash. A land of wheat and barley, of vine, figs, pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey. And the honey in this case is dates. So what do we see here? The seven species. And those are the species that are abundant in the land of Israel. I saw them with my own eyes. It was incredible to walk through the streets of Jerusalem and just to see somebody's random pomegranate tree growing in their yard or somebody's fig tree or their olive trees, which are abundant um, and everywhere. And so with my own eyes and my own senses, I was able to walk through the streets and really perceive and take in this promise that is issued in the book of Devarim. So a few words here about what is the meaning of the seven species and how they relate to our own lives. Well, the pomegranate, let's take that one for the first one, reputed to have how many seeds? 613, relating to the 613 commandments. If you've ever opened up a pomegranate and counted, you might or might not find that there are 613 seeds in there. But no matter what it represents or it symbolizes the abundance of mitzvot and our connection to the commandments and to our relationship with God, that should be fruitful and should be abundant. Wheat and barley. We can talk about these at the same time. We say that bread is the staff of life. We find in this week's Torah portion that you should not live on bread alone, but what issues forth from the mouth of God. So we know that bread is important, that wheat and barley go through a process, an arduous process. We don't just get bread from the earth. We have to make bread from the earth. We say we thank God for uh, helping us really to bring forth bread from the earth, but we know that we need to take a role in making that bread happen. So um, as much as we need that bread to survive, also on the spirit. Well, what does wheat and barley represent? The endeavor to nourish our physical bodies as well as our spiritual aspirations. And what is it about the nature of the, the wheat berry or the barley berry? It must be planted, plowed, ground, cared for, harvested, winnowed, right? Sifted, kneaded. Bread doesn't just happen, we make it happen after a long and difficult process. So we can connect to the land of Israel every time we make bread, every time we make challah for Shabbat by taking out that piece, of course, and giving it to God and burning it up in that way that we do as, a, as an offering, as a memory of the Mikdash, right? But knowing that every time we make bread, we're connecting to these uh, elemental aspects of connection to the earth. Barley is also unique in that it goes through that similar process as wheat, but barley connects us also to the story of Ruth, which takes place during the barley harvest, a story that is the precursor to the birth of King David, David HaMelech, which again connects us to the promised land. A couple more here, we have figs. Figs are my favorite. I just love the smell. They're so delightful to see the fruit and those big, beautiful leaves. Some even say that the fig tree, the fig leaf is what was used as the clothes that covered Adam and Eve in the Genesis story when God said, where are you? And they figure out they need to dress themselves in something. The Midrash says it was probably the fig leaf. Anyway, fig is the symbol of longevity, of Netzach, believed also to be a national tree of Israel um, because of that everlasting fruit, that delightful aroma, and the capacity to survive even in hardship. We have olives, zeitim. Olives are of great importance in Israel for their industry. Uh, it's used, of course, for the delicious fruit, but also for oil and the wood is harvested as well. But the olive also represents peace. 
And that is why uh, we know that from the story in Genesis of Noah sending the dove off to find some sign of life. And what does the dove bring back? The olive branch. So the olive branch becomes that symbol of peace. And the olive branch is also on the symbol of the seal of the state of Israel to this day. Uh, Joshua bin Levi compares the Jewish people to an olive tree in our Midrashic tradition. Why is Israel compared to the olive tree? Because just as the olive tree doesn't fall, uh, sorry, just as the leaves of the olive tree do not fall in winter or um, in, in summer, so too the Jewish people will never be cast off, neither in this world or the world to come. Um, the bark is so astounding and gnarled and serves as protection and the fruit is so delicious once, it, once it's cured. But for me, the, my favorite part of the olive tree are the sparkling, glistening leaves that help to really create that idea of that city of gold. Wherever you look uh, in Israel, uh, you see those sparkling, glittering, um, effervescent, beautiful leaves of the olive tree and we are reminded of that symbol of peace. Uh, last two dates we have the tamar which in this verse is actually the honey it says dvash eretz zavat chalav udvash a land that's flowing with milk and honey the honey is from the dates and dates are so sweet and delicious and um, every part of the date tree can be used we're uh, reminded of the date palm um, in the stories of moses of david and tamar and the branches provide uh, uh the branches provide food and shelter and sustenance um, and a beautiful beautiful tree symbolic of the kingdom of Judah. Last one are the grapes. So the grapes, the Anavim, uh, we have a reference to the, those delicious, beautiful grapes in the story of the spies when they go out to scout the land and they bring back enormous grapes. It takes two people to carry the, the poles to carry this enormous cluster of grapes. Um, and wherever you go in Israel today, you can see just these beautiful grape vines uh, and grape harvest uh, is fantastic in Israel. Beautiful wines that are emerging, more wineries every day. Right now is actually the wine festival um, in Jerusalem at the, at the Jerusalem uh, at the Israel Museum. Um, we saw them setting up but we didn't get to go there. Uh, so beautiful wines that connect us to the land of Israel um, and the stunning grapes. Um, symbolic of hope symbolic of our connection to the land. Well, as we move into Shabbat, my blessing is that we be fragrant like the fig, hearty like that wheat and barley, productive like the pomegranate, sweet like the honey of the date, resourceful like the grape, and peaceful like the olive. Shabbat Shalom.